cannot pay too great a tribute to all the men and women of all ranks and in the supporting civilian services who by their spirit, loyalty, and devotion have contributed so much to the record of the Royal Canadian Navy. Admiral, uh, I recall that in 1944, I believe it was, you were doing operations in the Channel, and uh, Athabascan was was sunk, and you had a pretty uh, horrendous time. I remember rescuing survivors, and uh, when there were e-boats in the vicinity and whatnot, uh, could you enlighten us about that experience? Well, there's been a lot written about it, and uh, it sounds horrendous. Actually, it, it was a comparatively short period of time that we, that we was involved in any rescue operations. We, uh, we were on patrol, and we got word from Plymouth that there were two ships proceeding down the channel, and it looked as if they were going to try and get around Ushant and go into Brest. So we aimed for Ushant and uh, thought we could just, the timing was such that we just cut them off. And that's what we did. When we were within range, we opened fire. They turned and ran, as usual. That was their, that was their policy. And uh, I had, uh, in the air, I had a signal 90 degrees to port together which I'd been in the, uh, which I'd planned earlier on in the in the evening, uh, just to avoid to, to comb their torpedo attacks. We believed at that time that uh, when you fired torpedoes, you fired them at right angles to your course, you know. And uh, we we knew that torpedoes would be coming towards us, so we turned. We had a, a signal in the air to turn that thing. But as they turned away, they opened. They. Uh, the bearing change, and I cut that turn short of, of 90 degrees in order to keep all the guns firing. That was probably the mistake. Anyhow, we finished the turn and went on, and uh, within, uh, within a minute or two, uh, uh, Athic Baston was stopped. All the stuff said to me was, I'm stopped. And, and uh, then we went on past. And uh, somebody on my bridge said, well, why don't we make smoke and cover them? So we did. We swung across where Athabaskan was and made smoke. And uh, it was so, I suppose, in the meantime, we were chasing one of the destroyers. And several minutes went by before uh, Stubbs said, well, I seem to be settling off or something like that. And I think I sent a signal that Get ready, prepare to be taken in tow, I will come back for you or something. Went on. One of the destroyers went up channel and we chased him and eventually drove him ashore, kept pounding him after he was ashore, thinking, <laughs> we think we thought every salvo was hitting. Actually, the, they all were hitting the rocks beside him and bursting, you know, we thought big shot went up, hit every every salvo. We, we got wise after a bit, and by that time, there were no other enemy destroyers on our screen. We weren't in touch with any others. I went back to where Athabaskan was, and if I remember correctly, as we approached the position where he had last been, we fired a star shell to see if he was still afloat. You know what I'm we were feeling, uh, well, the action's over. If the enemy had run, and the action's over. Uh, we, we, we struck the right spot. We, we ran into uh, survivors and, and little, we could see the little lights, you know, and so on. We ran right into the middle of them. But we stopped and we were drifting sideways and the uh, survivors on the starboard side couldn't swim fast enough to keep up with us. I remember shouting, encouraging them, you know. And on the port side, we had nets down and trying to pick them up. Of course, they were pretty well scattered, you know. 
I was scared to death. We, we were all scared to death in that area of mines. We needn't have been, but we were. Here we were drifting sideways, and I thought any minute we're going to strike a mine, and then we've lost two ships, not one. I really, that was, that was uppermost in my mind. I said, we've got to get the hell out of this. Second thought was, I have no right to be here. It's getting daylight, and I'll only be blamed for, for hazarding another ship. So those are the two thoughts that drove me. And I decided when to go. I sent a message, I telephoned. He was on the quarter deck. I said, now, I'll give you five minutes. And then I said, four minutes, three minutes, two minutes, one minute. And I gave him another minute, I think. And then we pulled out, and it still dragged people off the net. How many people did you pick up? Oh, oh 40 or 50. Yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. rest that weren't killed were taken yeah. prisoner, of course. In the meantime, I had said, well, now we lower, we lower all our boats and floats and leave them. Because these fellows got life belts and they, they perhaps help save a few. One of the, uh, well, the orders didn't get through. One crew of the, of the motorboat went with the boat. Without my knowledge, I didn't know they'd gone. And they uh, cruised around for a bit, picked up one or two. And then their engine failed. In the meantime, we'd, we'd pulled out. The, the, uh, there's a fellow called Hallam, lives in Victoria, who was, was in the motorboat at that time. I've seen him several times since. He said, when it started to get daylight, we got scared and we, we, we met another go at getting the engine going. We finally got it going and we picked up a few more survivors. And then we saw the German minesweeper or something approaching. So we, we skedaddled, headed for the, for the British coast. And he says, strange enough, they, they didn't come after us. That motorboat ended up at Land's End somewhere, you know, somewhere on, on the British coast. And came back with, I think, uh, the crew and six, six more survivors. I suppose an incident like this uh, go, goes over and over in your mind still, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh. Now, I, I had asked twice during that period, uh, for air protection, for yeah, air cover. Mm -hmm. What we were afraid of, and what we were taught to be afraid of at Plymouth, was uh, air attack at, 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 in daylight. We believed, and we were we were taught to believe that, that the dive bombers would attack us in daylight, and we had no uh, protection against dive bombers. No, we fully expected if the dive bombers come, we're sunk. So the whole, the whole philosophy was get the hell off the French coast before daylight. It was quite unnecessary. It was lack of, lack of intelligence. The, the German air, aircraft had long since moved up channel, thinking the invasion was going to take place away up channel somewhere. There were no aircraft in that area. I knew there was a good Canadian fighter bomber squadron at Plymouth. Uh, near Plymouth, and I felt like saying, look, tell these Canadians this is a Canadian ship and they'll come. <laughs> but the reply every time was there's no, there's no air cover available. Now, all the talk about the MTBs, MTBs were ordered to uh, pick up survivors, and before they'd got halfway down, they were ordered back because it was going to be daylight. I didn't know that. I did know that they'd been ordered. I didn't know they'd been ordered back. It didn't matter. Any any uh, uh, thoughts in my mind, and any anything that affected my decision to pull out was entirely what was in my mind, not not, not what anybody else said. The admiral, in his report, said that uh, they had intended to tell me not to stay beyond six o'clock. They had intended. It. They didn't. But they tell didn't. Me. No, I didn't. Know. There's a lot of speculation about why we pulled out and, and why we did this and that thing. In my mind, was uh, two thoughts. A, I'm hazarding the bloody ship, and B, we're going we're gonna to drift on a mine any minute. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, that's going to come back. Yeah. I didn't know he'd been torpedoed at that time, you know. I thought he might have hit a mine. Yeah. A lot of these things were quite unnecessary. The, uh, 
the Plymouth command, the intelligence should have been good enough to know that we, there was, wasn't all this danger of air attack at dawn and daylight. And B, the, uh, uh, we should have known and they should have told us that that's not a good area for surface mines. The, the, the tides are so strong in the channel down there, seven knots are normal along the coast, that they wouldn't, they wouldn't lay mines to, for surface ships. They laid them for submarines, deeper and so on. But there was really no danger that I was afraid of, no danger of running on a mine, but I didn't know that. Well, I still think of that sort of thing at night and sometimes wonder what I should have done or what, why I did what I did.